The purpose of this video is to show you how to configure the payment processor in Odoo. So first thing you want to do is obviously have an Odoo environment set up with a few of the basic apps installed. You also want to make sure you have this link provided here. And in this example, I'll use authorize.net here in the US and these login password API creds, etc. So let's go back to our database and look at what we need to configure in Odoo in order to get this working. First, if you go to settings and you type in payment, um, you can turn on your payment uh, functions here. So I'll just turn on these two. And save it. And then once I've done that, I'll go back to those that same view, or you can just go to your acquires. Um, right, I can access my acquires right here, or I can go to accounting, and within accounting, I can see my payment acquires here. Same thing. If I go this way, or if I go to um, into my settings, and I access my acquires right through here, it's going to take me to the same same table. So once I'm here, I'm going to find the particular uh, acquire that I want to configure. And we have a bunch of options here. Um, but when doing demos, usually I, I'll either I'll set up uh, via Stripe or I'll do uh, authorize.net. In this case, I'll do authorize.net. And Stripe and authorize.net are some of the uh, most powerful ones. As you can see, this does online payment, status tracking, manage subscriptions or recurring payments, save cards. Um, let that load and I'll finish what I was saying. Um, right, save cards, you can do manual capture. So for example, uh, if the customer wants to authorize the credit card, but not officially charge it until after the products have shipped, that's something we can do. And so authorizing essentially means, okay, like, you know, the customer has placed an order with me. Uh, I want to make sure that that credit card the customer gave me is legitimate, that I'm going to be able to charge something to it. That's authorization, right? So authorize.net will allow you to send those credit card details to them. They'll authorize it. You'll receive notification that the credit card has been authorized. You'll sh and then once you ship your products, then you can click, click capture and that will officially right, charge the credit card and, and right, start the process of, of withdrawing the, front, the funds and, and moving those over to you. Um, okay, so at this point, I'm gonna activate and here's where I start my config. So I'm going to first click test mode. Then I'm going to right, take the API login. I just copy that, paste, transaction key, same thing, copy and paste. And then signature key, copy, paste. Then once those three are filled in and it's in test mode, generate client key, and it generates it for me. Then I go to configuration. Here I can say, do I want to save the cards? Never let the customer decide or always. I'll just leave it as always here. I can choose to capture amount manually if I want for this or, and then uh, down here's payment flow. I'll run the payment from Odoo. And then for the payment journal, I want to set the payment journal up here to be electronic. Okay, now that that is done and it's in test mode, we're almost set. The last thing I want to do is, is go to the settings and search for automatic payment. It's not there. And the reason it's not there is because I have to set my invoicing policy to invoice what is ordered. So that's the default invoicing policy on products right now. So I've just changed it to invoice what's ordered. And then when I go back and I search automatic, now automatic invoice is a, an available option for me. So what does automatic invoice do? Essentially, when I create a sale order, it will charge the card and it will automatically create the invoice for me, post those journal entries and, rec and, and mark that invoice as a in payment status. So let's explore how this is going to work. Go to an order. I don't think I have any customers in here, but I'm going to create one on the fly. John Doe. Uh, product X, we'll call this for $12.99. Save. And at this point, I can go to action, share. And this will allow me to actually open up, I'll open up an incognito window to show you, but I'll paste this and it will take me to the online order. Here I can click sign and pay. This will be my signature, the first step in the process. Um, 
and before I do that, keep in mind, this is important. Make sure you either send by email or you mark quotation as sent. If it's just in the quotation stage and you never officially sent it to the customer, it's going to block you as it did here, as it did block me uh, from proceeding with processing the order because the system thinks that, you know, you haven't officially sent this to the customer. Therefore, you know, we don't want to let the customer move forward with a quote that hasn't been officially sent. So I can either like mark it as sent here or send it there. I'll just mark it as sent there and re-click this. There we go. So it captured that signature. And now enter the credit card. And I always do 424242 across the board. So always just make sure this is in the future and your card code can be anything. And then this, I always just do the 42 with authorized.net and it always works. At this point, the credit card is officially going to process. It'll just take a second. I always, during my demos, you know, explain how it, while this is processing like this, I explain, okay, it's PCI compliant, we're PCI compliant, right? We never necessarily, we never always, I should say, we never touch the credit card data in Odoo. It always lives in authorized.net. Authorized.net actually captures, right, the credit card data. They store it in their system if you give them permission to. Uh, when it comes time to charging things in Odoo, right, Odoo actually holds a token, which we pass back to Authorize.net. Authorize.net decodes the token and matches it to the corresponding credit card. That credit card gets charged, and then, right, we use a token as a sort of intermediary to, uh, to communicate which card we want to have processed by Auth. You'll see once that's been processed, uh, your invoice is automatically created, marked as paid, as well as your delivery order here. Let's look at how that looks on the back end. So I'm just going to refresh this by going to the orders. There's that cell order one I just created. Status is fully invoiced. I can open it up. Here I can see the delivery order has been created and that invoice. That's the automatic invoice setting. This is it. It automatically created the invoice, automatically posted the journal uh, items here. So I've right, credited product sales. I've credited uh, tax and then I debited my AR. And if I scroll down into the chatter, it shows the, the details of the transaction. So it right, it shows from the time the invoice was created, sale it's linked to, it actually shows, it sends an email of the uh, PDF to the customer indicating that it's been paid. So the customer knows their invoice has been paid. Here it shows the transaction and then the related payment. So I can drill down into that uh, payment itself and I can see the, right, the token that I mentioned earlier that was saved. Uh, I can see the journal, the journal entry, uh, and then the details of the transaction, the invoice that's linked. Journal entry is important. You can drill into that and you can see uh, that we've debited outstanding receipts and we've credited AR. So this will, this payment will technically sit in outstanding receipts until we reconcile the uh, invoice with the bank statement line, which we can talk more about that later. It's more of an accounting flow versus the payment processing flow, which is what we're focusing on here. Um, Going back, you'll see, obviously, as I mentioned, it's been confirmed. So authorized.net confirmed it authorized and confirmed the transaction for us, which then once that came through, it updated the status. And same thing, when you look at the sale order, you'll have that same information here so that your salesperson, you know, maybe they don't have access to the invoice, but they still want to know if the uh, transact, if this order has been paid or not, they'll be able to see that here. And then obviously you have your delivery order here as well. Invoiced quantity on the sale order line shows one, and that's the end of it. Um, if we go look in our general ledger, you'll see the breakdown here. You have your outstanding uh, receipts. You have your um, AR, tax, and product sales, and everything balances accordingly. And if I actually go to the accounting dashboard, then uh, right, you'd be able to get into your online sync and all that jazz. But that is the basics of how to configure the payment processing workflow. So if you have any questions about how this works, feel free to let me know and I'll be happy to help. Thanks.